I rather like the new TAPAQ version 2.0 temperature monitoring system. It's Wi-Fi enabled, so I can check on the temperatures of my cooks via the internet regardless of my current location. This is great for overnight cooks that are typical when making barbecue. The device has four temperature probes, and I can use any or all of them at the same time. Although the device is somewhat water resistant, I wanted to make it impervious to wet weather by putting it in a watertight enclosure. Another goal was to better manage the probe's cables as they can easily get tangled and it's often difficult to tell which probe is monitoring which temperature. So I decided to make an easily repositionable enclosure that serves as a container for all the system parts as well as a USB battery power supply. There are four rare earth magnets epoxy to the back of the box for mounting onto the cooker. There's also a cord with a carabiner that attaches to a cord on the cooker just in case I drop it while moving to different positions. Although mounting the box on the front of the cooker is the most convenient and works well for lower temperatures typically used with barbecue, it's great to be able to simply move the box to the end of my pellet cooker away from the chamber when doing high temperature cooks. I started this project with a waterproof Lexan gearbox picked up at a local sporting goods store. The TAPAQ comes with four probes and my Blazin Grillworks gridiron cooker also has its own probe that plugs into the cooker's controller. I used colored heat shrink tubing to easily identify each probe and plug. Because the smoke tends to darken and discolor the tubing, I also coated the tubing on the probe end with cyanoacrylate, CA glue. I threaded a small piece of neoprene, roughly the diameter of the plug, onto each cable to help make the system watertight. I like winding each probe's wire onto cable turtles. This makes it easy to unwind just the wire length needed, minimizes tangles between probes, and makes for a neat probe storage. The TAPAQ itself is mounted in the case's lid with some Velcro. I wanted to be able to easily put the probe and power plugs into or out of the enclosure, so I opted to use five watertight cable glands Four of them are PG-9 size for the Tapacuse probes and one PG-16 for the USB power cable. I placed O-rings between the cable glands and the Lexan to assure a watertight seal. Although I can run a USB power supply cable through the largest cable gland, I've simply inserted a bolt into that gland and instead I connect the cable to a 5200 milliamp hour USB battery which yields 25 hours of TAPAQ runtime on a single charge with no need to run a line to an AC outlet. If you use a USB battery, make sure you get one without an automatic shutoff. The TAPAQ draws so little power that some batteries shut down after a while because they think no device is present. When mounting onto the cooker, I attach the dead man cord on the box via a carabiner. To make it easier to thread the probes into the chamber, I move the box to the top of the pellet hopper, unwind enough cable for each probe in use, and thread each probe through the access port. If I need more or less cable, this can be easily adjusted with the box in its normal position. After cooking, I generally just rewind the probes onto the cable turtles, but if I want to, it's a simple matter to put all the components into the box and optionally insert bolts into the open cable glands, making the entire assembly watertight. I hope this gives you some ideas about using your Tapacue or other equipment with your own cookers.